Friday at 11 o'clock, so we can talk about research now. And I, I'm so glad that you're with us here this week because so much going on in the world of autism, and sure especially is. in terms of research. And one study that came out this week that hit way too close to home for me personally uh, about women and being pregnant and obesity. And we talked a little bit about it uh, with Nancy Allspot Jackson on Wednesday, but I said I can't wait till Dr. Tarbox is here so we can find out a little bit more about it because, boy, the way people are treating it on the news is not what I'm necessarily seeing okay. in the study. So tell us from your point of view what you see. Sure. So basically, uh, the study came out of the Mind Institute up at UC Davis, and what they did was they looked at data from about 1,000 children, mm -hmm. um, and about, I think it was about 600 or so of those uh, kids had an ASD, uh, and uh, the rest were divided between developmental disabilities and typically developing. And basically what they looked at was uh, difference in uh, rates of obesity, um, uh, uh, maternal, um, I'm sorry, gestational diabetes, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, uh, type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, and they looked at, essentially what they did was look at is there any relationship between any of those mm -hmm. factors. Um, and I guess what the hypothesis was, was that um, uh, metabolic conditions such as obesity and, and diabetes um, cause disordered levels of um, inflammation in the body mm -hmm. and inflammation has been connected with autism in the past mm -hmm. again no clear cause and effect relation at all mm -hmm. um, but there is some evidence to show that um, if there's in, uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines which is a fancy fancy sounding name for inflammation mm -hmm. um, in the woman during pregnancy um, that those cytokines can um, affect the brain development in the fetus um, and so that that could have, um, that could be one contributing factor um, to the development of autism. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was one rationale. Uh, the other rationale was that um, women with metabolic conditions during pregnancy, such as, uh, again, obesity and, and diabetes, um, have disordered levels of glucose. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, too, I'm less familiar with that, but that, too, has been linked to um, uh, problems with brain development. And so both of those factors, hypothetically, could be contributing variables to autism. Um, and both of those factors have been linked to these metabolic conditions, such as obesity and diabetes. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, let's look at a thousand kids and let's look at all those different variables and measure them and see if there's any mathematical relations and right. use statistics to kind of see, um, you know, was there, basically the question they're asking is, was, uh, was there more obesity in the m mothers of children with ASDs mm -hmm. than in the mothers of children with typically developing kids? Right. Um, and what they found was, yeah, a little bit more. Um, the chance or uh, the increase was pretty small. Uh, like you said, I think there's uh, a lot being made of this in the news. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, the number that people are sort of making a big deal out of is it says um, it increases your risk of having a child with ASD by 67%. So when you say risk of ASD increased by 67%, that sounds huge, right? Like, oh, I have a 67% chance now or something? Or what, you know, right. what does that mean? <clears throat> but the actual, the baseline risk of having a child with ASD is pretty low. I mean, it's an epidemic, it's huge, it's growing, but it's still fairly low. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now maybe one out of 88 is your risk. Um, and so now uh, what this study suggests, and again, it's only one study, it needs to right. be replicated, uh, is that that, um, that, that increase, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that, that risk increases a little bit. So uh, to make the math a little bit simpler, um, if you had a one in 100 chance, so 1% mm -hmm. chance, mm -hmm. increasing that chance by 67% would mean I now have a 1.67% chance. Does that make sense? So still so less than 2 a 2% chance. Percent, yeah. Not even a 2% chance chance. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, so now maybe the increased risk is about 1 in 56 or 57, something like that. Right. Um, so it's not like suddenly they found one of the causes of autism, not by a long shot. Right. Uh, and the study authors are not suggesting that. They're not, I read the study, they're not, they're not pretending that they found one of the causes of autism. Um, they're simply saying this may be yet another of the many contributing factors. So it could be a risk factor. It could be a risk factor, yeah. Okay. And again, this is one study. Um, all the families lived in the state of California. Um, it's a big state with a lot of people, so it's mm -hmm. probably pretty representative, but who knows, might not be. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does need to be rep uh, replicated by other study groups in uh, other regions of the country and around the world. Okay, well it certainly is my case. I had gestational diabetes and had to do insulin and have battled with weight my whole life, so I know I was like, ah, yeah. you know? Well, I, you know, one thing that I think is really important for folks to, to think about is probably uh, a lot of your viewers right now are thinking, oh wow, well I had, you know, I was obese during pregnancy. Well, 
thirty percent of women, uh, sorry, thirty percent of adults in the United States um, qualify for obesity, meaning they have a BMI of thirty or higher, mm -hmm. um, and sixty percent qualify for being overweight, meaning right. they have a, uh, a BMI of twenty-five or higher. So we're talking two thirds of the country uh, right. is overweight, and, and one third falls into this obesity range. So if you know if that was you, that by no means makes you the bad guy. That's you're right. quite normal. Well, and for women, uh, even for women who start out pregnancy and aren't overweight, because when I started the pregnancy, I was not overweight. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. I am now, but I wasn't then, and uh, gained weight with the pregnancy, which is also the numbers on that are astronomical too. Mm -hmm. That it's really, uh, I think that the weight gain that they were suggesting was the tipping point was around. 30 points or 30 pounds and most women gain at least 30 pounds it's very unlikely I'm, I'm pretty sure though that their uh, what they looked at in this study mm -hmm. was not if you qualified uh, as obese because of weight gain during the pregnancy it's it was if it was present beforehand ah, at, interesting. at the time you became pregnant interesting uh, well this is why I have you come in to explain these things to me because it has been talked to death all over the news and I think the the thing that's been the most disconcerting to me is that there have been several uh, very loud, outspoken people who have said, well, okay, great. Now we have figured it out. Yeah, that's we, uh, There were other studies that came out, too, and they said, you know, pair this with this, and we've figured it out, and so will everybody just calm down now? And, and I hope that nobody walks away from this thinking we have in any way figured it out. No, no. In fact, it's entirely possible that it's not related to obesity at all. It could be that uh, obesity is related to some other variable, which is related to it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So that's the problem with correlational research. They didn't. Uh, they didn't actually look at um, how many people uh, who are obese then give birth to children with autism. They didn't make people more obese or less obese and right. see if that changes prevalence of autism. You right. see what I'm saying? Yes. All they did was look at uh, statistical relationships between different things that are already there. Um, so it's by no means a proof of a cause and effect relationship. It's just it's just that um, the likelihood that those two things, obesity and autism, uh, would be um, would co-occur at that rate purely due to chance mm -hmm. is less than a 5% likelihood. So okay. it's more than 95% likely that that uh, more obese women, uh, uh, obese women gave birth to kids with autism at a slightly higher rate. Mm -hmm. um, that's more than 95% not likely due to pure chance alone. Okay. But it still is not cause and effect. It right. still could be that if you're obese, you also have something else that is, you know, right. that's that's related to autism. So but it's it, information, it's, and it, it brings up even more questions, and hopefully, uh, you know, thank goodness you guys, the researchers, are in charge of what happens next and not the media. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, if, if folks do want to take home message from this, it's, it's what we kind of already knew about weight, which is something that, you know, all Americans uh, uh, battle with, and that is, um, being overweight uh, is probably the number one contributor to a lot of different health, yeah. negative health outcomes. Yeah. And so, you know, should you then try to be at a healthier weight before you get pregnant next time? Sure, why not? But yeah. didn't you already want to anyways? Yes, you know what I mean? That's exactly. where we're. That's where exactly. we all are anyway. So maybe here's one more reason to, to eat a little bit less and exercise a little bit more. You know, which is yeah. good advice for all of us. Isn't so. it? Isn't it good advice for all of us? Okay.